Welcome back everybody to another Python tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to go over how you can create a correlation heat map. That looks something like this. The first thing we've done is we have imported pandas, seaborn, matplotlib, and the vega datasets. The dataset that we are going to use for our correlation heat map is going to be cars from the vega datasets. For our imports, we've used from Vega datasets import data. Then we use data.cars and assign that to cars. And this will be the data frame that we will use. To get a preview of the data, we use cars.tail. And our cars data frame includes acceleration, cylinders, displacement, horsepower, miles per gallon, name, origin, weight in pounds, and year. Now, for our correlation heat map, we do not want to use all of these columns. We just want to use the columns where we think there might be correlations. So, for example, we're going to get rid of the name, the origin, and the year. Here we've used our carsdataframe.columns to list out all of the columns. And then here we have included just the columns that we want to include in our correlation matrix and or heat map, including acceleration, cylinders, displacement, horsepower, miles per gallon, and weight in pounds. And here we have a preview of that. Now, once you have your data frame set up to include the categories that you want to include in your correlation matrix, to see that correlation matrix, then you can use the data frame dot core. And you can see here we have our correlation matrix. Now, to get an idea of what core does, here we have our help screen. And you can see that the purpose of core is to compute the pairwise correlation of columns, excluding NA null values. Also note that the default method is the Pearson. And we can see that the Pearson is the standard correlation coefficient. If you're curious about the Pearson correlation coefficient, here we have included some information from the Wikipedia article. Note that the correlation goes from plus 1 to minus 1, where 1 is total positive linear correlation, 0 is no linear correlation, and negative 1 is total negative linear correlation. Okay, so now that we have an idea of how that works, we can go ahead and generate our correlation heat map. For our first example, we're going to use Seaborn. The first thing we've done is created the size for our plot. To do that, we use the plt.figure and we put in a figure size of 8 by 8. To create our heat map, we use seaborn.heatmap. We put in our data frame with our correlation. We want to go ahead and add the annotations that you see here from our correlation matrix. And for our color map, we're going to use cool warm. It automatically adds our color bar over here. The blues are negative correlations. The darker the blue, the stronger the correlation. And then you have this middle section where the colors are real light, white, or almost gray, where there's not much correlation at all. The reds are positive correlation, and the darker the red, the stronger the correlation. So for example, if you want to know the correlation between miles per gallon and acceleration, you can see that there's a slight correlation of 0.42. You can see diagonally that there is a complete correlation, which really doesn't tell you much, for any of the elements that are the same. So for acceleration and acceleration, you get one. So what you might be looking for are very strong correlations. Another very strong correlation would be the number of cylinders and displacement. And that would be a positive correlation. A very strong negative correlation would be miles per gallon and weight in pounds. And that means as the weight in pounds goes up, the miles per gallons goes down. And if you ever want to do a comparison and see those correlations in scatter plot form, then you can use the Seaborn pair plot. And what you'll notice is if you compare this heat map to this pair plot, you'll see that they match as far as correlation goes. So for example, if we look right here at displacement and horsepower, it looks like there's a fairly strong positive correlation. So we would expect that to be pretty red. So let's go look at displacement and horsepower. So here we have displacement and horsepower. And you can see it's quite a dark red at 0.9.
Okay, moving on. Another way that you can create a correlation heat map is with matplotlib. Now you'll notice to create the same heat map, it takes quite a bit more code. With the Seaborn, it's only two lines of code. With the matplotlib, we have to type out about nine lines of code, give or take. However, if you wanted to use matplotlib, let's just quickly go over how you could do this. We've gone ahead and imported matplotlib, then we use plt I am show. We put in the cars with the correlation, we specify our color map, and then you set the interpolation if that's needed. To show the color bar, we use plt.colorbar. Here we have gone ahead and set the labels for the x ticks and the y ticks. For these, the first argument is basically the number and locations for where the labels will go. The second argument are the actual labels. If you want to rotate the labels, then you can use the rotation argument. And we've gone ahead and done that for the x axis. To set the size, you can use plt.getCurrentFigure. Dot set size in inches, and we've gone ahead and made this 8 by 8. Now, to put the labels for the correlation on each square, we've gone ahead and used the nested for loop. Then we use plt.text, and we tell it where to place it for the coordinates based on x and y. Some additional placement arguments include horizontal and vertical, and for those we have assigned center. If you'd like to change the color of the text, you can assign that here. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see we get basically an identical correlation heat map. However, in this case, instead of using Seaborn, we've used matplotlib. And I suppose one of the advantages of using matplotlib might be because matplotlib is such a powerful library and you can do so many things with it, it might give you more customization options and possibly some performance benefits, but I have not tested that. However, as we already mentioned, it's going to take a lot more code. Okay, that's all we have for this tutorial. Join us again next time.